Hi, um, now when I'm doing big LED installations and the like, when I need to throw lots of data around, I tend to use RS-485 because it's cheap, it's simple, rugged, easy to debug. Generally when things are controlled from a PC, I tend to use um, something like this. This is the uh, EasySync Quad RS-485 box. This is based on the FTDI FT4232H. Um, EasySync are actually an FTDI company. They just make a range of products, including these, these quite nice industrial um, uh, boxes. Now I don't tend to get deeply involved in the software um, for this sort of thing, but I've had I hear sort of various comments about uh, yeah, some performance issues sometimes, and in particular that um, it's very sensitive to packet sizes, the overall throughput you get. Now an upcoming installation I've got is going to use 16 ports, so we've got this um, 16 port box. So I thought I'd do a little bit of investigation of how the you know how the throughput varies based on things like packet size and how you address the multiple ports just to see how much it can be optimised. So I've hooked the outputs up to the digital channels on my scope so I can actually see the outputs on all 16 channels and just to take a look at the um, relative timings of them. Okay, I've set this up so I'm sending um, a packet of data out to what, all 16 ports and obviously what you want, ideally want to happen is that data to come out fairly simultaneously so you maximise your bandwidth. So um, I've set the board rate to 12 megaboard at the moment. This is purely just so we avoid um, for the moment looking at the effects of the actual board rate, so it's going out pretty much as fast as possible. And of course this would also apply to the uh, FTDI sort of parallel interface products as well. So that's our 16 packers, and you can see that we've got a nice lot of overlap. Um, but yeah, it's clearly sending them out fairly simultaneously. Um, incidentally, this uh, 16 port box, basically what it is, it's four FT4232Hs and a USB hub in, in the same box. And yeah, if we send the port, send the data to um, the ports in a different order. Yeah, the order is different, but again, the overall time is about the same, and it's yeah, seems to be fairly reasonable. The transmission time is relatively small. We're only sending a 512 byte packet. So as we increase the packet length, we send a 1k packet. Again, not quite sure what that, those little glitches there are, um, but basically. You know, it's still fairly efficient. With it's taking you know, about about twice as long to send that, twice as much data. But it's all you know. We've got a nice lot of overlap. Lots of stuff happening in parallel. Now, if we send um, two K packets, again, it's yeah, it seems to be fairly well behaved. Again, if we send it in a different order, it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference whether we you know moving from port to port on each on the, within one chip or um, between the chips it doesn't seem to make a great deal of difference. But watch what happens as soon as we go over 2048. I'm going to send a 4K packet, and basically things just go catastrophically wrong. Now, what's happening here? I, I, I've had various bits of feedback, especially from um, someone that did actually look at this in some detail, is that it appears that the um, the buffering in you know, the system between the FTDI API and the chip itself. If you try to send a packet longer than that, the driver actually blocks and waits until it's sent before um, it actually returns. So even though the other ports are idling, sitting there doing nothing, because it's waiting to, to, to clear enough buffer to send the next packet, yeah, you're just stuck wasting time doing nothing. So you can see that yeah, the, the, the timing just goes catastrophically. In fact, you can actually see see here the actual delay between sending the next one is about half a packet. So it's clear it's doing the 248, then sitting, stalling, and waiting for that next one to be sent. Also, and this is also where the board rate makes quite a significant difference. If we go back to our 2K packet, if we go to slower board rate, so for example, if we knock that down to um, 6 mega board, Again, yeah, you know, the overall, the actual delay between starting each is almost exactly the same. There's pretty much no difference. It's just the actual time because of the actual board rate um, taken to send that data on the bus. So if we now knock that down to two mega board, again, you know, we've still got lots and lots of overlap. We've got very efficient usage of the bus and just this very small amount of um, delay per port, which is the you know, the actual code doing it doing each call. So the the driver's clearly you know coming back to us really quickly. But if we, you know, if we even just go over to 2049 rather than 2048, bang, you know, we've, we're sending the start, but we're, you know, we're having to wait. And it, interestingly, you know, although we've actually got four completely separate USB chips in there, the driver is clearly not smart enough to, 
you know, be able to multi-thread this process of weighting and, and increase the buffer size, which is um, a little bit annoying. I, I doubt there's probably many people doing this sort of stuff, but it's the sort of thing that the driver really ought to be able to handle because, I mean, the main buffer limitation is the hardware and the FTDI chip, which is fair enough. But, you know, there's no reason why it couldn't add a bit of extra buffering at the PC side. Um, and in fact, if you look at the documentation, there is actually um, a parameter for the out transfer size, which isn't, which I say isn't implemented. Now, whether that would help or whether that's really only to do with the buffering in the USB chip, I'm not sure. But um, it's clear that you know, if you're trying to get a, a really decent amount of bandwidth, it's very, very important to manage how, what your packet size. So, for example, if you've got to send 4K of data, you don't send 4K to each port in turn. You send 2K to each port in turn, and then the, the other two again. So, if we simulate that, so basically, this is sending two lots of 2K. And I'll just crank the board rate up again, again, just so we're not really seeing the effects of the actual board rate. It's really the USB side of things. You know, you're never going to get more than 100% utilisation on the bus. So if we go back to the 12 mega board, so this is sending basically for, you know, 4K to each port, but this is by splitting it into two packets of 2K. If we do the same thing with a single write, then it just takes hugely more time. Yeah, you know, way, way, way more time. So your bandwidth just go, just completely nosedives, and the, the bene mainly the benefit of using multiple ports just vanishes. There is a, there is some other fall off um, at smaller packet sizes. So if we go down to five twelve, you, you you get a little bit more overhead. So for example, if you send that same four K of data, but we send if we send that same four K of data, but as eight packets of five twelve, you see we do get a bit of spacing out. So it's not it's not really quite as efficient. But it, you know, it's not nearly as bad. It's, it's really it just goes over the cliff when you hit that 2K packet size. Now, I did want to see just how far I could take this. Unfortunately, uh, I've got another 16-port box. As soon as I plug that in, I then hit a limit of the USB chips out on my PC. Um, it actually only supports a certain number of endpoints due to the hardware limit, so um, I can only get 24 ports going. So if you're planning on going massively parallel, just make sure that your uh, PC uses USB chips. It actually supports the number of ports that you use before you suddenly find out before it's too late that it's not going to work. Right, so I've just done a load of tests with different numbers of ports and at various board rates and packet sizes just to get a feel for sort of where the limits are. Now if you look at the top end, you know, you can get about 16 megabytes a second throughput. Obviously this is the PC doing nothing nothing more really than just throwing stuff out of the USB port. But it's not a great deal of time to do much other processing. One thing that is sort of fairly clear is that going above 16 ports doesn't really, yeah, I think we're starting to, certainly at the higher end, we're probably starting to hit some USB bandwidth limits in that between say 16 to 24 ports, our upper limit is pretty much the same. Uh, these figures aren't super accurate, there's some sort of um, not particularly fine granularity in the measurement, but they, they do give a rough idea. Whereas obviously at lower board rates, the USB is a lot less busy, so we go down to 2 meg, or if we ignore this top, you know, these, all the 4K lines are just horrible because of, the, because of this um, blocking issue. But if we look at the 2 mega board line, then at lower board rates, you know, we do get a fairly linear increase in throughput versus number of ports, which is what you'd expect. Um, over here, I've also just worked out approximately the um, basically how what portion of the time the serial bus is busy. So, best case, we're getting yeah, around the sort of 90% ish. Yeah, you know, we're just completely hammering it. And obviously, at the higher board rates, again, we're starting to run into USB turnaround and latency issues here. So, you know, the, the best we're doing is and at 16 ports, we, we've still got 87% um, U up, but yeah, this is the serial, not the USB utilization, so that, that's still fairly good. But in terms of the, the sort of cliff edge we go over at this 2K packet limit, obviously, at large number, you know, that's really very dependent on the number of ports because the more ports you have, the more times you're going to sit waiting for the thing to clear to get, them, get the data through. So, I mean, down here on the um, on a four port box, we still see a 50% drop which might be tolerable in the yeah, depends on how much bandwidth you really need but I mean it's approximately a two to one difference but the going to smaller packets yeah, the, uh, the the drop of efficiency you get at smaller packet sizes because obviously you've got a more, lot more overhead that's still very noticeable at you know, the high board rates as you'd expect but as you go down towards the lower board rates it makes very little difference because the you know all, all these little turnaround times are fairly small compared to the actual data transfer time because of the slower board rate 
But it is, it is quite interesting just to see where the figures are. Because obviously, the one one of your main system limitations is going to be on board rate and the, you know whatever's at the far end of this thing, how fast that can catch the data. Um, I tend to use PIC32 a lot uh, generally without DMA, and six meg board is just about doable. But you have to be qu pretty careful. Um, Twelve meg, I think you. I don't think you'd have any option other than using DMA to do that. Mainly because the, just the in, the uh, interrupt processing overheads. So on six meg is about the highest I'd sort of generally use for anything. But uh, yeah, e even that with, say, a 16-port box, you can still get your know, 8 megabytes a second throughput, which is quite good. Um, I'm quite often asked, well, you know, why don't I use Ethernet? Well, for, for the nice thing about 485, it's really, really simple. It's simple to code, it's simple to debug. You can just stick a scope on the line to see what's happening, analyse the timing. You don't need to mess around with sort of hubs or anything. It's just, you know, it's simple and easy. Um, I've never really had see, you know, seen any need to do anything more. Just you know, if you need more bandwidth, just throw more ports at, at it, and that, that that works quite nicely. And the other nice thing about that, if you're doing something on a large scale, if you can break it down so that you know you've got one system working on a single port, fully working, then as you add more ports, it's just more of the same. So it's highly unlikely you're going to get run into issues. Whereas if you're using, for example, Ethernet, you start getting, you, you know, you don't necessarily know how how well that bandwidth is going to scale. Whereas if if all you're doing is parallel th paralleling things up, then certainly everything downstream of the USB 485 interface you just know is going to work because one of them works, and therefore however many more of them are going to work. So, yeah, the the only other issue we've really seen is this blocking issue um, based on the packet size. So as long as you're aware of that, and also also if you're doing so, obviously you're not just going to be throwing data out. You're going to be doing some processing processing to generate content. So. This even if you're not using that many ports, even if you're only using a single port box, if you can split up the balance between sending data and processing down below that 2k packet size, that's going to make a big difference to your to your overall system throughput. So if you're, you know, say rendering a load of data, then say sending 8k of data, then rendering the next 8k, and then sending that, if you can actually split that rendering task into say four sections, it means that you're yeah, you're not going to waste that time because this, you know, as soon as you send more than this 2k packet length, um, even to a single port, you are wasting time, just the driver just sitting there waiting for that to come out the other end. Um, so even at you know, lower board rates, even on a single port, it can be quite, quite a noticeable uh, slowdown. So if you can arrange your task such that you're sending data in that optimised 2k packet size, that's going to make a really big difference to your, your overall system throughput. And that may also be an issue if you're, you know, using a perhaps a, l a lower power platform than a PC, maybe a Raspberry Pi or something. Um, I suspect there's probably a very similar issue there. So by optimizing the packet size, you can probably make quite a substantial difference to your overall system throughput.